It is written in the book of good and evil that in a time long ago all was peace and harmony, paradise on earth. Then one fateful day the universe shifted. All was dark, and for those born on that day, their evil destiny would be sealed. Now they have united to wreak havoc on an unsuspecting world, and forevermore would be known as warriors! Led by the walking, talking tower of destruction, plague! A true physical specimen, an iron beauty, steel maiden. He's too hot to handle, he's Pyro! The biggest chip off the rock of Gibraltar, Lady Battleaxe. The Duke of Doom, he's your worst nightmare. The royal good girl, gone bad, Princess Malice. The utter state of confusion is chaos. And a truly dangerous snake in the grass, Venom! And I, the Lord of Rules and Discipline, have included the most skillful teams of modern day knights to do battle against the despicable warriors. Representing the gold team from Boynton Beach, Florida, the stumped double and actress Diana Cuevas and her teammate Michael West, an aircraft mechanic from West Lake Village, California, hope to soar to victory. For the purple team from Baltimore, Maryland, security investigator Robert Pavel and his teammate Argentinian-born Marta Leanza, an aerobics instructor, think their opponent's chances of winning are slim. These teams shall vie for knighthood in a world in battle where but one couple shall meet the riches of sweet victory. There is no turning back. The time has come for night and war. of knights and warriors. Well, hi again, everybody. I'm Joe Fowler. Thank you very much for joining us. As always, I'll be calling the action throughout today's telecast as we take you back to the games of King Arthur's Court, and he would be so very proud of these games. They are updated, and they're presented as television's newest, most exciting sports spectacular. And joining me wherever the action takes place throughout this Warrior Dome is Lisa Canny. Here I am, Joe. Today's competition should be just as exciting as the battles we've seen in the past few weeks. Michael, Diana, Robert, and Marta have a real, real battle on their hands, though, so they better keep on their toes. Lots of energy right now. Today's round one competition. The Knights will take to the arena as they score off in eight brutal events. I think our Knights are ready. They are up for the challenge. They're anxious to face the Mighty Warriors. You ready? You? Let's go. The action begins with our version of that medieval military machine. The catapult. Joe, our catapult is a 20th century marvel of steel and power, launching red balls the length of the warrior dome to the waiting knights. The warriors will compound the knights' problems by firing yellow balls at them from the giant slingshots. The knights must break the 60 mile per hour slingshots and hurl the red balls back toward the castle through the ring of fire, scoring 5, 10, or 15 points for each successful throw. Playing time for this event is one minute. The sights and sounds of the warriors in the warrior dome. The louder the booze, the happier the warrior. They love it. The warriors are going to take their places behind the weaponry for the catapult. Of course, one piece of business still needs to be taken care of. The ring of fire needs to be ignited. Pyro has proclaimed this to be his moment. And with Pyro, who needs matches? What is he doing? What is he doing? I don't believe this! I have to admit, I'm a little bit impressed. Pyro, I think he mocks the Lord of Rules and Discipline. Here are our competitors. This event will be a heads-up match between the gold teams, Michael West, a 27-year-old aircraft mechanic from Westlake Village, California. He's six foot, weighs 185 pounds. And the purple teams, Robert Pavel. He's a 28-year-old security investigator. He's six foot, 180 pounds from Baltimore, Maryland. Chaos and Plague will be manning the catapult. Nightmare and Pyro behind the slingshots. While the guys wait for the start, 
Well, let's find out what may be in store for them. I'll tell you what's going to happen. They're going to get a mug full of ammo. <laughs> Incoming! <laughs> okay, let's get set for catapult. Both of our competitors in the 10 zone. They're going after the red balls. There are 60 seconds on the clock. There's the trumpet. And the first knight to grab a red ball is Michael West. He'll go from the 10 zone and shoot high. 52 seconds and counting. The next red ball's up. They're both fighting for it. Robert Pavel went for it, dropped it, and will not try any longer. Now Pavel has it in the 10. The 5 shoots high. 42 seconds to go. Michael West dodges a bullet and throws it high. The red balls count. The gold bullets hurt. If you've got the guts, charge all the way and take one. There's a shot. Hits the rim. Pavel at the 10. Ducks. Dodges. Shoots. It's high. It's a good piece of dodge. And there's a shot by Pavel. It's good. We are on the boards. 10-0, Pavel. Michael West has to grab something. Pavel has another one. He ducks and shoots. It looked like it might have just missed. There are 10 seconds to go. Both of them going after one ball. Michael West has it for the goal team. Shoots. Pavel hits one from the right side. He snuck one in. It's 20 to nothing with one second. One more shot by Michael West. It's too late. Pavel leads it 20 to nothing. We got a couple highlights for you. Now take a look at this. Robert using the patented duck and chuck method. I don't know if this is strategy or survival, but it works. Here's Lisa with the guys. A nice move there, Michael, but you didn't score. What was the problem for you? It's hard to see. The balls, the yellow balls are coming from all over the place. I got hit in the face with one of them, but I still tried, tried to keep it up on scoring as much as I could. I just wasn't aiming them right. Okay, Robert? I think the biggest problem was the yellow balls coming at me. I, if I wouldn't have avoided those, I would think I would have tripled my score. Okay, this is the second heat of catapult. Our female knights, Diana Cuevas and Marta Leenza. They will now go head to head. Diana is a 28-year-old actress from Boynton Beach, Florida. She's 5'5", 115 pounds. Marta Leenza, she's originally from Argentina, now living in Hollywood. A fitness instructor, 26 years old, 5'8", 130. Battle Axe and Venom are now manning the slingshots. Their goal is to prevent the knights from zeroing in on the ring of fire. The Steel Maiden and Malice are at the catapult. Diana and Marta are staking their ground. They look ready. There's the trumpet. Cuevas in gold. Leanza in purple. Leanza will take the first shot. It's, it's a little bit high, but I'll tell you what, she was close to the target. Both of them struggling to get one. Cuevas has it near the five. Throws wide. 47 seconds to play. You got to keep your eye on Battle Axe. She can fire 70 mile an hour BBs. Here's the shot by Marta. Just missing. You got to run, catch, throw, dodge, push, shove your way through this event. A shot is wide. That one taken by Lanza. A shot by Cuevas is missed. You know why? Because Battle Axe was bearing down at the slingshot. Look at the intensity in the Warriors' faces as they prepare to shoot their victims. A red ball is caught, dropped, now picked up by Cuevas. Cuevas shoots from the 10, eludes the gold bullets, shoots low. Here comes Leanza. She'll shoot high. They want a bullseye sometime. They're working on it. 12 seconds to play. The shot by Cuevas again is low. It looks like it almost hit a warrior. She'll pay back later. Another shot low. Everything seems to be off the mark. There are three seconds. One more to go. Cuevas, Diana, up and doesn't have enough time. Goose eggs across the board, but they worked hard. Take a look at your replay. Marta does the guys one better with a double duck. There's one, there's two, and the chuck. While Diana just can't seem to find the handle. Whoops, where's the ball? I tell you, nobody should have to work that hard to get a ball through the ring. And you certainly did, but you just didn't do it. Tell me what was going on out there. I mean, from outside, it looks very easy, but when all these lights and everything, you can tell. Diane? Yeah, same thing. The lights were a real intimidating factor. And when the balls came at you when you were up close, it was just really hard to see it. Lisa, I counted 27 gold bullets fired at those ladies. That's why they came up with nothing. Here is your totals. After the catapult round, the purple team of Leonza and Pavel lead 20 to nothing over the gold team of Cuevas and West. It's a blistery and swift competition you see before you. Now, don't you go away, fans. For coming up, the sorcerer's wheel will spin us off into the warrior stratosphere. But first, it will be the clash of epic proportions in battle form when we return for more knights and warriors. We welcome you back 
tonight's in Warriors. We have seven more challenging events to go, and their names tell you everything about them. Battle Swords, Sorcerer's Wheel, the Volcano, Roller Joust, Tug of Warriors, the Pit, and our final event, Target Onslaught. We now move on to one of the most difficult and treacherous of our one-on-one -on -one contests. In this event, each competitor must possess strength, agility, and balance. This tall platform houses two mechanical treadmills going in opposite directions. Each competitor must keep pace with the moving track while attempting to strike each other with their padded swords. If the warrior falls first, 50 points go to the knight. If both are still standing at the end of this 30-second event, the knight will receive 25 points. Of course, if either swordsman falls, the event is over. Our aircraft mechanic, Michael West, will go first. His opponent, Nightmare. West is on the platform. We are ready to begin. There we go. Nightmare is pounding him on the head immediately. The knight, the knight is down. West is down. He is struggling. Nightmare dispatches Michael West in seven seconds. You lose your balance, you're a dead man. Let's go to the highlights. And you'll see that Michael did lose his balance. Tripped up, falls. <laughs> Looks like he's on a cease begging for mercy here. Not much you can do at that point. Nightmare the winner here, and he says, uh, I'm done. And now, here comes Robert Pavel. He is, uh, shall we say, the next victim. It takes Nightmare an average of about 10 seconds to knock out the Knights. We're ready for battle swords. Both treadmills start up. Look at Nightmare. Look at Nightmare. Just stand there. He's grabbing, he's grabbing it for that battle sword. I don't know about that either, but... I guess it all looked down the up and up. They're going to have to give it to Nightmare. What do you think he was saying here? Hit me with your best shot. Come on. Then he does a little impersonation of a Vegematic, slicing and dicing Pavel. You gave it your best shot there, Rob. Oh, Nightmare. I put him all to sleep. Yeah, you That's got why me. I'm you, undefeated. You got nothing. Punk. You got nothing, sucker. Drive by insult there from Nightmare. What do you want to say to the I'll people who think again. this is an easy one? I will see him again. You know, he must say his lucky charms this morning because he got a lucky shot, and that's all it was. All right, we're looking forward to that, Robert. Thanks a lot. Official scores now, Joe? Lisa, I think we're in for a treat the rest of this show. I really do. Here are the official scores now. The purple team retains their lead despite the problems in battle swords. The purple team of Lienza and Pavel, 20. The gold team of Cuevas and West, nothing. One of the most unique, if not most dangerous of our events combines quickness, balance, and keen reflexes. It's called the Sorcerer's Wheel. Played on a revolving turntable measuring 25 feet in diameter, the wheel will spin in one direction while the knights try to outrun the wheel in the opposite direction, passing the red arrow lap counter. Now, if that's not tough enough, we've placed two obstacles along the way. Two two-foot hurdles that the knight must jump while trying to stay on both feet. This is a 45-second event. Each time the knight passes the lap counter on the outside of the wheel, 10 points will be earned. If both feet touch the inside circle, the lap does not count. But uh, that's not all. Hey, Badlack, while the wheel's spinning, I'll skin on it. Oh, not the malice mace. Oh, yeah, the malice mace. It's hard. It's heavy. It's over. Yeah. <laughs> OK, here we go. This is an individual event with just the ladies competing, but the points that they earn will be added to their team scores. Diana Cuevas is going to need a lot of speed. She's going to have to get away from Battleax. Steel Maiden, Princess Malice, and Venom. They have control of the mace. Sorcerer's Wheel is about to begin. 45 seconds on the clock. You've got to make a lap and score 10 points. A lap counts when you pass that big red arrow. Look at Battleax holding the mace. She's going to wait and hit Cuevas head on. What a tactic! And she might have waited too long. She might no, she did. Ho, ho, ho. I underestimate the power of Battleaxe. She was head on perfect, right in the rear. Take a look at that one huge highlight. And watch Lady Battleaxe. She's so good at this. It's the warrior wind up because the knights usually wind up in the ouch. <laughs> Next day, Lady Battleaxe cheering for herself. Nice try there, but Battle X is hard to beat. That's a pretty good eye. <laughs> Definitely as hard as they look. What can I say? It's three against one. I'll get him next time. You better believe it. Good for you, Diana. Let's see how Martha does against the Warriors. Joe? Actually, it's four against one, but I can't blame Diana for being a little confused at this point. Now, will Martha learn from Diana? Martha Rayenza is next on the wheel.
There's the trumpets. She's holding off. Can you blame her? There goes Badlax again, just going to fling the Mesa Cross. Oh, I see. They're toying with her. 37 seconds and counting. You may, look at him toy with her. Do you get what's happening here? She touched the infield so she doesn't get credit for that lap. You can't put both feet on that infield mat. You gotta stay on the outside of the dish. Marta Lienta, she's a former Miss Argentina. You wouldn't want to ruin that pretty face with a mace. Ooh, a mace in the face is not fun. 17 seconds, she's got 10 points. Badlax holds it, dares her to cross. Come on, Marta, you gotta get across the, the finish line to get a lap. Throws it into her gut and down she goes. Badalax is having her way. You know Martha sees the giant mace, right? And her life must be passing before her eyes. She's got to be thinking, get me back to Argentina. Badalax says, hey, I got your ride to Argentina. Well, you know what you were talking about when we say good versus evil. You're seeing it. All right, Martha does pick up 10 points. Those are very big because it gives her team, the purple team, a 30 to nothing shutout over the Gold Knights. Now is the time to compose ourselves. For when we return, the warrior of doom will rumble and spew forth a toxic flow of bumps and bruises from the volcano for knights and warriors. Certainly one of the most ominous and powerful forces in nature is that of the volcano. History tells us that this monstrous pressure cooker often strikes without warning. Well, with that as our premise, we give you our rendition of The Volcano. Joe, The Volcano rises 30 feet above the Warrior Dome. Two knights will attempt to scale this meshed mountain, while four caged warriors will be inside waiting to erupt and ultimately disrupt the knight's brave climb. There are four scoring zones worth 25, 50, 75, and 100 points for reaching the crest of the mountain. This is a 45-second event for the men, one minute for the ladies. Back to Jeff. And bubbling inside this volcano are chaos, plague, pyro, and nightmare. You know, it really burns me up thinking of them touching my volcano. So let's go get him. Get him. He's hot and he's bothered. That's a bad combination. Now, the knights are wearing their safety harnesses. They're moving over the respective sides of the volcano. Their goal is to get to the top grab their flags that's worth 100 points they look ready plague is on the harness and he's gonna slam jam and bam them west is in gold pavel in purple 38 to go on the clock and i can see now that pyro is lifting plague up above as high as he can so that he can look down on the knights he's trying to slam pavel who is now in the 50 point range pavel gets slammed in the legs if you can knock the legs free you've got a chance to knock the knight there's another body slam Plague cannot knock Pavel down. Pavel has 50. Now Michael West is in the 50 range. There are 15 seconds to go. Pavel going for 75. Plague swinging back and forth, trying to knock him loose. Both our Knights have a chance at 75. Pavel is almost there. Three seconds to go. He's got to get above the ring. He's slammed and jammed by Plague. He is above the ring, and he does get his 75. Michael West will handle 50. He did not quite make it to 75. So 75 to 50. Pavel over West in that run. Let's show you the highlights. We'll start with Plague, the human wrecking ball. Neither Michael nor Robert could make it to the top. Here's why. Plague is like a DJ, you know? The hits just keep on coming. This is one twisted event. Now, Diana Cuevas and Marta Leonza will be ready to go inside that Tower of Doom. You've got our Lady Warriors swinging and ready to pound. Cuevas in the gold, Leonza in the purple. 60 on the clock. There's the trumpet. Let's see if Diana's work as a stunt woman helps her out here. She's in the gold. She's used to doing this. Look at Leonza go. She's in the 25 point range, reaching for 50. And Venom is well above both of our knights. Watch Venom go for the head. Yes! Oh, 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 she got a big one in there. 38 to go. But Martha takes a licking and keeps on ticking. She is moving into the 50. She's cleared the 50. Meanwhile, Diana Cuevas is still struggling for 50. Look at Martha Leonza go. She's chopped down at the knees, still moves. Battleaxe desperately trying to lift Venom up, trying to meet the challenge of Martha Leonza. Leonza's going to the 75 point range. She is above the rim. 12 seconds to go. Will she be able to get to the top? Venom reaching. 
punching with the bag. Five seconds. Cuevas is in the 50. Leonza is in the 75, and that's what she will take. 75 to 50. Leonza over Cuevas in a hard-fought battle. Oh, we got to show you this shot from within the volcano. Here's one way to get ahead. Boom! Talk about getting your bell rung. Here's Lisa with a high-flying Marta Leonza. Welcome back to Earth, Marta. Good job. Boy, vengeance just laid into you. She got you in the head, the arms, the upper body, the lower body. Let's get some comments for a few. She got me everywhere, but I got up there. And yeah, and you hung in there. Good for you. Congratulations. And you go catch your breath, and let's check out those scores. Well, Martha's 75 points have given her team an 80-point lead. Let's take a look. Go to the board right now. The purple team of Leons and Pavel have 180. The gold team of Cuevas and West, 100. Let's fire up the surveillance camera. Get into the warrior den. See what's going on. You guys look right out there. We ripped them. Yeah. We rolled. Yeah. We stomped them. Yeah. I stomped them on the left leg. Yeah. I'm not eating them on the right leg. Yeah. Any questions? Yeah. What's a flank? Oh. Declare your allegiance for the Warriors all the night. For your fan club kit, send six dollars to Nice and Warriors Fan Club, Box 15998, North Hollywood, California, 91615. It's rolling thunder when we return for more of the chivalrous crusade on Knights and Warriors. Welcome back to the second half of Knights and Warriors. We're going to shift it into overdrive now. It's the purple team of Marta Lienz and Robert Pavel who have 180 points. They lead the gold team of Diana Cuevas and Michael West by 80. In this next event, we've taken the number one spectator sport during medieval times and given it a 1990s twist. The sport at that time was jousting. Today, we call it roller joust. The horses may be gone, but not the excitement. In fact, we've replaced the horses with inline skates. The knights and warriors will race around this oval track. Now around the track are 24 rings that the knights will attempt to capture using a five-foot lance while being chased by two warriors. For the first 15 seconds of this 45-second event, the knights will have the exclusive use of the inside lanes of the track to escape the warriors. The red rings are worth 10 points and the gold 25. If a warrior captures a knight by knocking him off his feet, the event is over. The knight keeps all of the points scored. Sound easy? Not if our wheeled warriors have anything to say about it. You hit him high, and I'll hit him low. But what if they break? Oh, don't worry. We'll exchange them for new ones. And do it all <laughs> over again. Diana will start from the center of the track. Her first bit of strategy is to pick a lane and go for the rings. Venom and Steel Maiden are circling the track, ready to jump into action. Everyone looks ready. There's the trumpets. Diana Cuevas' team is down by 80, but she's going to go for a 25. She got it. 37 seconds to go. She chooses to go into the warrior-free zone. She only has that for three more seconds. Uh-oh. She comes out. There's Venom right on her rear. She got another 25. I'll bet it was worth it to her. 50 points for Diana Cuevas before Venom catches her from behind. Show you the replay. You got to think on your feet. In this case, you got to think on your rollerblades. Diana zigged when she should have zagged, and she finds herself in the clutches of Venom. And we all know Venom loves to clutch. Marta Leonza is being harassed by the Warriors outside the ring. She's got to clear her head and get ready for the match. Roller Joust is underway. Steel Maiden and Venom circling the track. Leonza's going to wait and call in behind Venom. That's a good move. There's a 10. She'll go for the 25. Got it. There's 35. She can use the warrior free lane. Got that too. Smart piece of skating. Move around and get the clear lane. She's made some great decisions. Another 10. Oh, she missed the 25. Here comes the Steel Maiden, the tackler from the side. The Warriors don't think this is rollerblading. They call it roller bleeding. And there's a sample. Martha will take it, though. Let's go to a replay tape. We'll show you some smart skating by Martha. She uses the inside lane to get around and pick up some extra points. These are big points, but Steel Maiden does have the angle on her and careens her right there. Right the end, Martha. I think you're on a roll. <laughs> she... <laughs> it's mad. 
that work thing she's wearing. Nice girl. Little sour grapes happening here. Be bothered her that I'm pretty. <laughs> Ooh, <laughs> a little cat fight going on. All right, we got a great job on the purple team. Back up to Joe. You bet, Lisa. So the purple team has bumped, pushed, shoved, and skated their way into the lead. Leons and Pavel, 225. The gold team, Aquavis and West, 150. Stay where you are, for when we come back, it's no man's land. When we enter the rage of the pit. But first, a daring jewel of wits and tongue of warriors, right here on the one, the only, the original Knights and Warriors! Okay, we're back for more Knights and Warriors. In designing our events, we combine two basic elements, strength and strategy. Now, some events require more strength, others require more strategy. Such is the case in our next event, Tug of Warriors. Here in the arena, you see before you two 10-foot pedestals. At each end of the rope is a 24-inch swivel upon which the knight and warrior will be positioned. The object of the event is to pull the warrior off the pedestal in 30 seconds or less. If the knight is successful, 100 points will be awarded. If the knight falls, no points will be received. If both the knight and the warrior manage to stay on their pedestals for 30 seconds, the knight will be awarded 50 points. Back to you, Joe. This is a one-on-one -on -one matchup with the male knights taking on that master of confusion, chaos. Michael is going to have to muster up all the strategy he can. He's been harassed by the warriors on the ground. What happens to him up on the pedestal? Get ready. They pick up the slack quickly. 28, 27. Oh, it looks like Chaos is slipping on his pedestal. Michael's got Chaos. Chaos is down. He is down. That's a first. Michael West has KO Chaos for 100 points. We got to see that one more time. Here's what it looks like when a warrior's at the end of his rope. Chaos made the fatal mistake. Give Michael an inch. He takes a mile. Yow! Sit to him, Michael! Oh, I love it. That was... I didn't think he's going to go down that easy. He started getting off balance, and I just pulled. And that was all it took right there. Congratulations! The deck dwellers love it. I love it! The knights, the warriors hate it. That's what counts. Yeah, Where'd it go? It. Joe, it's yours! <laughs> How would you like to be that man right there, Robert Pavel? He knows that chaos has just been embarrassed. He knows that chaos will come out smoking. We're underway with Tug of Warriors looking at chaos. Quickly pulling, but Pavel's holding his own. There goes chaos! Oh, the Knights are racking up the points, and I don't think chaos can take much more. Of course he's going to be dirty about it. It won't take away a single point, though. Rack it up, 100 for Pavel, and the Knights are having their moment. You can see Lisa Canning down there with the group. We can go to her. Robert, Robert, let me talk to you. Robert, two for two, tell me how you feel. Well, it's like this. They got a lot of buff, but they ain't got no brains. That's their problem. Were you surprised? I had a guy over here, looks like he had a lobotomy. He looks like he's got a bald head. Were you surprised, though? I wasn't surprised. He's a wimp. Wait a minute, did, did he say what I thought he said? Okay, Pavel getting that low center of gravity as you're looking at the replay. Chaos loses his footing. He is down for the second time. You won't see this happen too many times. Well, you can add 100 fat points to both of the Knights. That's a first. Haven't seen that before. Here's your cumulative score. The purple team of Leonza and Pavel with 325. The gold team of Cuevas and West, 250. We got a fight. Now, and we're going to keep it going, too. Got to catch your breath. Our next event is called The Pit. It is a full contact event in which Diana and Martha and Michael and Robert are going to square off and battle it out one-on-one. -on -one. Now, if I do say so myself, it is one of the most punishing events in our tournament. Here's Lisa Canning to tell us more about it. This rigorous event is played in a 25-foot deep dish of doom where the Knights will go head-to-head -head in the most fierce and raucous wrestling match you've ever seen. Throughout this event, the Warriors will rock the ball back and forth while the Knights try to pin each other as many times as they can in 45 seconds. 
the points really add up as the Knights, using only a blocking bag, must wrestle each other down in the Mark 75, 50, and 225 point sectors. It's important to note that any other type of pin will be disallowed. And you can add to that four lady warriors rocking the pit. Now it's my turn to rock, so you watch me strut my. In this event, the Knights will have to wear protective gear, back, elbow, knee pads, head gear. Believe me, you wouldn't want to be caught in there without it. The ladies are the first into the pit. We're about ready to begin. The Lady Warriors will gather around the deep dish and they will start to rock it. Here we go with 45 seconds, Diana Cuevas and Marta Leanza. You can see the numbers on the dish. That will equate to the numbers they'll get for the, the pin. And right now, it is Leenza on top of Cuevas. That looks like a, yes, it's a pin. It's a 50-point pin, 50. Keep it coming. They'll set it up again. They've got to start it again. Getting up, there they go. Now they'll rock it. 19 seconds. It's 50 to nothing. Leenza in the lead. Cuevas is down. Cuevas is down, but not pin. 10 seconds to go. They're both down, there's no pin. Cuevas pushing Leenza. There is a pin, and it is given to Cuevas. 75. That's going to do it. I'll tell you, they were like mice running around in a ball. It was hard to stand up. 75 to 50 in favor of Diana Cuevas. And look at the replay. You can see Marta and Diana never really could quite get their footing in this event. I'll show you why. Look at Madison coming. He just about tipped the ball over. All right, let's get ready for the guys. The rules are exactly the same for Michael and Robert. And so, by the way, are the pitfalls. The Warriors gather around and don't waste any time rocking. West for the gold, Pavel for the purple. They are sky high following their last performance in Tugger Warriors. Let's see if the emotion gets to them. Pavel is all over West. They're both down. Pavel on top of West. West back up. Pavel is down. No pin, no pin. 31 seconds and counting. They're spending an awful lot of time in the deep dish. Who's pinned? They're down, but there's no pin. Do we have a professional wrestler in this? It looks to me like Robert Pavel has got a pin. Mm, no pin. It's close. It's close. 13 seconds to go. They are not calling a pin. What is this? Pavel thinks he's got one. It's Pavel in purple. West in gold. Two seconds. There was not a single pin yet they spent the whole time in the dish down. We've got a replay or two. Once again, the rules clearly stipulate that you must pin your opponent with the pad, not your hands or arms. So a lot of energy is spent, but no points earned. Robert, you spend a lot of time wrapping your arms around Michael instead of pinning him with the pad. You lost a lot of time. Well, he's a tough competitor. I mean, I'd like to get one of these warriors up in here, and then we can really get it on. And you, hard fighter. And you couldn't get away from him. Oh, uh, we just kept fighting. You never know where you are in here. One minute you're this way, next minute you're that way. As much as they spin it, you never know what's going on. Yeah, it can't be easy going up against a fellow knight. All right, Lisa, what we saw were two strong knights evenly matched. What we have is one competition evenly matched. There's your board. The purple team of Leonza and Pavel with a 50-point lead over Cuevas and West. 375 to 325. When we come back, the Knights will take aim on target onslaught. When we return for Knights and Warriors. Join us live in the Warrior Dome. For tournament tickets, send a self-addressed stomp envelope to Knights and Warriors Tickets Box 15998, North Hollywood, California 91615. Before we move on to our final event, Target Onslaught, we have some breaking information about one of our Knights. Robert Pavel of the Purple Knights, he has gone down. Let's go down to the Warrior Dome floor. Lisa Canning has the info. Lisa. That's right, Joe. He has gone down. He sustained a head injury in the pit. So from the training room, they say he cannot continue with the tournament. However, he has been replaced by Jeff Jockham, known as Rock'em Sock'em Jockham. And one of his hobbies, from what I understand, is skeet shooting. So he's a really good shot. And this could be a lucky break for Marta. That's the story from here. The final event. Target Onslaught. It's played in two parts. The entire Warrior Dome is converted into a huge shooting gallery. In the first part, one teammate has 30 seconds to hit six floor targets. And the weapon of choice? This specially designed power crossbow. 
the archer will be trying to earn time rather than points. Starting with a minimum 30 seconds in the bank, each hit is worth an extra five seconds. One hit pushes the total to 35, two hits to 40 seconds, and so on. That total is then passed on to the shooter's teammate for the second half. In the second part, the other teammate must hit the high-flying onslaughting warriors as they zigzag their way toward the shooter. A warrior hit on the first slide is worth 150 points, second 100 points, and the last closest slide is worth 50 points. The purple team of Marta Leonza and Jeff Jockham will go first. They are leading by only 50 points. Marta has elected to shoot first for her team. The Knights are ready. And the first active target is the moon. She shoots low, but she's online. Just had to raise it up a little bit. Yes, nice shot. 23 to go. She gets an early target. Now she is going for a horse. One of the horses reloads and fires. She was close, just to the left. 16 seconds and counting. Just low. Another one, and she might have it. 11 seconds. She has five extra seconds for her teammate already. She is shooting for the sun. The horse. Yes, she got the horse. That's 10 seconds and two shots. Three seconds to go. And she gets the dragon. But the Leonza hits three targets. And she, with those three targets hit, will pass on 15 extra seconds to her partner, Jeff. He will step up to the power crossbow, get ready to take on the Warriors. He has 45 seconds to hit as many as he can. Here we go. And remember, Jockham is a skate shooter. This should be interesting. 38 seconds of counting, quickly reload. He misses Nightmare. Back to the deep end zone of the Warrior Dome. He can't hit play. He's shooting for the middle and missing battle axe. 28 seconds and counting. Another shot is about to be fired. He aims and misses. Chaos up in front of him. He's going to go for Nightmare. Can't hit him either. The skate shooter's missing. 16 seconds and counting. Another miss to the left of Venom. The Warriors are mocking him. He is low with Steel Maiden. The Warriors are all over him. Battle axe moves out of his way. Five seconds. Four. Yes, he does get a hit. One second to go. And he is able to get a 50 on the front rail. Wow, 50 points, a grand total now of 425. They have a 100-point lead. Fire up the Warrior Cam. And we've got one, count them, one highlight for you. Skeet shooter Jeff Jacob. He hits battle axe for 50 points. And we'll see how important that final hit is right after this brief commercial timeout. We're going to check out Martha and Jeff's opponents and see how they can do when we return for the conclusion of Knights and Warriors. Winners of today's tournament will receive a gift package from Gold's Gym, a leader in fitness for over 25 years. Famous sportswear, accessories, home gym equipment, and nutritional products. Serious fitness, Gold's Gym. Plus, a camping package from Academy Broadway. Products designed for carefree outdoor fun includes dome tent, nylon sleeping bags, double wide air mattress, and travel packs from Academy Broadway. Here we go. The gold team of Diana Cuevas and Michael West will now try to take the lead and win the tournament. Remember, they need at least 100 points. Diana is going to shoot first. It's important for her to do well, give her teammate enough time to win it all. There we go. The active target is the sun. She's got to aim to the left and hit the sun. She is high, 25, 24, 23 and counting. She's got to go for the sun again. Shot is just missed. That was within a few inches of the sun. Any target she hits gives her teammate five extra seconds and a chance to win. She has yet to get it. It's still the active target. Yes, she got it. That gives her teammate five extra seconds. Moves over to the left side of the moon. She's going to hit the moon. Shoot for the moon with zero on the clock. That's her last opportunity. Did not get it, but she does pick up one target. That means five extra seconds passed on to her partner, Michael. He will step up to the power crossbow. He'll get ready to shoot as many of the onslaughting warriors as he can. They need 100 to tie. 35 on the clock. Here we go. A 150 would end it immediately. Cross the back comes Venom. If he can get her, it's over. He doesn't go for it. He goes for Nightmare. Just missing Nightmare. 26 and counting. They're going for the win. Going for the win. He misses the back roll again for 150. There are 20 seconds of counting. It crosses in between Steel Maiden and Malice. He gets neither. 15 seconds and counting. He's going to go for the back row, and he misses play by a couple of feet. Play marking him as he goes by. In the front row, it goes by Chaos. There are five seconds. He's got to hit a 150. He's got to hit a 150 or 100 to tie. One second left. Here's the shot. He goes and hits a 50. That will not do it. He hit a 50. 
50, and they will fall just short. The final score, 425 to 375. Cuevas and West lose by just 50 points. Show you the replay. Michael was close several times, but he just kept missing barely. Then, of course, he asks Seal Maiden for her hand, and he gets it for 50. Let's go to Lisa with Michael and Diana. That was too close. You guys even just lost by 50 points. It was really close, but we had a really good time, and it was a lot of fun being here. Oh, good. And, Michael, what was the best part for you? The best part for the whole tournament was when I beat Chaos in the tug of wires. That was so exciting. <laughs> I just had a blast. Come on. Yeah. I kicked his butt. I like that. A bunch of great troopers. Thank you both. Let's give him a hand, please. Oh! <laughs> Diane and Michael, thank you both very much. Good job. Michael has a couple of kids. Michael Jr. and Brittany, I know you're watching. You're proud of your dad, aren't you? I'll bet you are. Okay, when we return, our winners, Michael Leons and Jeff Jockham, will receive their rewards in a special presentation. Don't go away. Our congratulations to Marta Leonza and Jeff Jockham. They are on their way to the face-off round, a step closer to the grand prizes in the Royal Finals. And now for our medal presentation, here's the Lord of Rules and Discipline. Good show, Marta and Jeff. You have played well and fought fairly. In so doing, you have surely prospered and will once again face the wrath of the heathen warriors. Spectators here in the Warrior Dome, let us have a big hurrah for the team of Marta Leonza and Jeff Jockham! Well, Lisa, Jeff Jockham comes in cold for Robert Pavel, and he gets what amounts to being the winning shot. He got me by surprise. I gotta tell you, I thought for sure the gold team was gonna get it. Yeah, it looked like Purple was in trouble, but they hang on, they win. It was a great battle, wasn't it? Well, close, next so week close. we're going to do this same thing again. It'll be just as exciting. Don't miss it. I'm Joe Fowler. For Lisa Canning and this incredible crowd, thank you for watching. So long. We'll see you next time on Knights and Warriors. Participants in today's tournament will receive Try Toucan Confections Fantastic Fantasy Candies, Mystic Medieval Orbs, Samurai Power Pellets, Alien Energy Notes. They're a candy. They're a trading card. They're a comic book. Toucan. On the Scandinavian Seas, some of the wildest storms happen below deck because of Royal Copenhagen men's cologne. Silent, invisible, invincible, out of this world video game action. Get Predator 2 for Genesis before he gets you. General Nutrition can help you break the mold with Phase 1, the complete system for the beginning athlete. Phase 1 at GNC. another kernel of wisdom from the warrior code of conduct always look both ways before crossing this crate then look inward for personal guidance just kidding here comes the truck <laughs>